Hello there. So, The Family Man Season 2. And, um, yeah, this series is actually pretty, pretty gosh darn interesting. This series is insanely good. This season, however, it kind of felt a little off, but not off. They introduce, like, the, the Sri Lankan organization that wants to dis disassociate itself from uh, India, the fact that there's a lot of heat there, the fact that there's a lot of... And I was, like, confused. I was like, wait a minute. The last thing we left off on was the chemical factory basically going to go up in smoke or in acidic poison. And... Yeah, it took them three episodes to explain what happened. That is so aggravating. You know, I was aggravated at the last episode of season one, but it took them three episodes to explain what had happened. No, explain it right away because we returned to know what happened. If anything, people showed up for the first episode when their answers weren't, you know, when nothing was explained, they probably just never returned again. That's the thing. You have to be able to keep your fan base happy. Like, for me, I was, like, doing a watch along. I'm like, well, this se season's already finished. I can just watch it all the way through. People who are watching it week for week are most likely not going to return. So, I, 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 it's gl I'm glad that it's going to get a season three. But it's just, like, aggravating that they risk that. That they risk doing something like that just because I hate it. I hate it when shows do something like that and then don't answer it immediately. They keep us waiting. I was like, oh, no. You have to wait a few episodes for the explanation. You just have to wait. Wait for it. Wait for it. Be excited. Be anticip uh, anticipatory, if that's even a real word. Be an, uh, anticipate it. Be excited for it. Well, you've already made us wait almost a year. What, why, why are we going to be excited for it? Hmm? What, what, what's the reason for that? Of course, I only had to wait a, few, a day or two. But it was just like, this is ridiculous. It's aggravating. Why? Why does it take forever for me to get an explanation? Sure, I think I watched the first three episodes in like in one sitting, but it was like I had to go through three hours of footage to get the answer to the thing that should have been answered at the very beginning. Because you watch it and I'm like, they literally could have thrown this in the first two minutes of the first episode. It would have gotten me excited for the rest of it. Instead of skipping to the future where um, Siri's working in a, at a, a non-government job. In a regular corporate job, making more money, <laughs> where where the wife is now working at home, she quit her job because she's a cheater now, and <laughs> yeah, it, it was just aggravating. Of course, this one, this series, and wasn't based off stories in the newspaper. I guess because it, it didn't fo follow a narrative. I'm sure they could have if they took the time, but imagine being the the author the writer of the series having to pick through each and every single one of the horrid news articles and having to okay we can do this this um our our you know a thing that a bad thing that happened to a woman sequence here which leads into this thing here which leads into this imagine reading everything that's just the worst of humanity and painting a narrative around it. I think they, the, the writers probably were disgusted after season one. They were like, you know what? Let, let's make up season two. Let's go with our own imagination. Sure, they still use disgusting situations, things that happen to women on the battlefield, things that just happen to, in general. It's like, okay, but at least they didn't have to look it up. Like there's, there's something when you're writing something, you have the ability to believe that it doesn't happen it makes it much easier because you can disassociate yourself from reality it's like okay this is fictional this happened to this curl because this is going on during this period and that makes sense it's like okay that's cool that's cool but the second you read it in the paper that it actually happened and then you write a story on it it's it, it, it's far far more disgusting especially as the writer to basically visualize it that that realistic scene into a story, but it, 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 it's, it's far more scarring. As I read myself, I know that's, at least that's always been my experience. It's always better to go with the fictitious to make things up than to take a real situation, unless you're, if, like, you can use it for relevant, uh, like a uh, relevant, but when it comes to something dark, like the, the story, yeah. But I gotta say, the favorite character I had was the broken woman. The one who was basically completely mind destroyed 
to being an obedient slave. All the women that served that terror organization were all nothing but pawns. Because one thing they kept doing was using the women as the ones who would take their own lives. The guys are far too valuable. So the women were just like, they're way too scarred. They've gone too, through way too much. No one's going to value them. No one's going to respect them. No one's going to see them as, you know, anything. So they just conditioned them to be the perfect weapon. And it was like, well, that's disturbing. The fact that their own organization was like, you know what? They don't deserve any help. Let's keep them as a weapon. And it was like, but it justified their actions because it was like, okay, they convinced these women that they serve no purpose other than the greater, greater purpose. Uh, but yeah, the fact that allies will take each other out just to form an alliance by saying it was someone else it, it's it's insane it's absolutely insane the way things work the way i kind of wished i really wished that at the very end the the crazy chick found out that it wasn't the indian government that took out the the her mentor or the person who saved her or whatever it is but it was actually the person that respected her that found her to be like a, a powerful asset the, uh, I thought that would be the best part. I thought that would be immense. I thought that would be amazing. But that, that wasn't the case. It, it still was good. I still liked it. I liked how they, they ended it. There wasn't no fanfare. There was nothing. But that, that, that ending, ending, ending. Because they end it basically with uh, Shree's wife uh, telling her that, she, well, basically, they cut to black. But she's telling him that she cheated. She's being coming clean because the therapist kept telling her not to come clean because he was a terrible therapist. Kept quoting Google instead of <laughs> instead of being a therapist. He just kept quoting Google. Um, but yeah, she ends up coming clean. And then post credit scene. I guess it was a post credit scene. We find out who was leading to everything. Who is the brain behind everything? Because it goes into the COVID times. It goes into that that aspect. And then at the very end, it was just like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I can't wait for season three. That's going to be absolutely phenomenal. Because it, it, it just seems so on point. Because yes, yes, who pays for all this stuff? Who pays for things to go chaotic in other nations? The U.S., Russia, China, the, the biggest powers in the world are the ones who finance these organizations. That's always been the case. And it, it, I, I, don't, I don't think that's ever going to change. The ones with the money or believed money and believed power will always be able to financially sustain the worst types of organizations. Why? Because if you can control those places, control what they own you, like if they you can just control the narrative. You can control everything. You can own more than... Yeah, I'm going off the rails. I'm going off the rails. But that that post credit scene, that ending was absolutely phenomenal. And I loved it. Because in the end, what's, what's the worst thing in power? It's power. Because they can never have enough power. Here, a, a, a government agency is using other smaller nations as pawns in order to get more power because you can never have enough power. What, what's the saying? Um, power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely because the power is something you just inherently want more of. We see it. I mean, even, even I'm guilty of that. There's something about creating a channel and seeing it grow, that's just, there's something intoxicating about being able to reach people. There's something intoxicating about being able to not really influence, because, heck, my opinions are very, very subpar to begin with. But it's just, there's something about it. And I, I really, really liked it, because it's like, yeah, yeah, show show everyone as the villain. That not just not just China, not just Russia, not just the U.S., not just Pakistan, not just Sri Lanka, not just, it, it's everyone. It's everyone. I like that. I was like, yep, there's always someone pulling the strings. <laughs> and the fact that they tied it in with uh, COVID, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm glad someone's doing a series on it. I'm glad someone's making uh, uh, going to be having a season on it because I'm excited for that one probably more than anything else. Just because that's the kind of cliffhanger you have. You sum up all the other answers. You sum up everything except uh, that one that one leader is still at large. That's it, though. Everyone else was captured. But you had everything. All the big questions were answered. Everything. And then you introduce a new question. You introduce a new uh, Oz. The Wizard of Oz. The, the wizard behind the curtain. 
You introduce that and find out that there is so much more going on than you ever realized. And that, that was like the best part. That was like the, the brain exploding moment where I was like, I'm so excited to see where this is going. Not the point where it's just like, oh, this person, this per these two people are stuck in a chemical building that's about to go up in, in chemical smoke. They're, they're, they're just not, not with that kind of cliffhanger. No, this kind of cliffhanger. This is how you write the end of a series. This is how you do it. And I am glad they did it this way because I'm still ecstatic. Not angry like I was with Bahubali. Not like I was with season one of The Family Man. No, I'm excited for season three. I'm looking forward to season three. Thank you all for watching. Talk to you next time. Doodles.